nice to see you. Good to see you too. Where are we talking to you from right now? My porch. Casey's over here. Hey, Casey. What's up? Uh, so you guys are in Kansas uh, or Kansas City, Rock? Missouri. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been there for? Since 2013. Sick. Uh, what do you do for work there? I work at a bakery called Ibis. Uh, it's with a company called Messenger. Um, it's like roasting coffee. Um, there's a kitchen there. We make our own bread um, in the pastry department. And, um, I used to manage the kitchen. And before that, I just worked at the kitchen. Um, but the pastry department is pretty like big around these parts and just kind of became like corporate sort of in the last like 10 months. So I'm sure it'll grow around the Midwest and then it'll, they'll reach out wherever they can and try to make a buck and put our pastries everywhere. Awesome. Hopefully they'll but make it out west for us. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I don't know. I don't know these, uh, these like corporate folks very well. I don't know where, like where they came from and how many people are involved, but they seem pretty, um, I don't know, per, seem pretty involved in like us, but I think we generate a lot and we have like a big name for ourselves here. So they kind of, uh, they're just excited about what we're doing and it's like kind of a big deal. So that's I'm sure awesome. I'm sure it feels good for them too, especially if you guys have a good product and a good name already representing it's it's easier to get behind people like that. Yeah, for sure. Like if I had money, I'd be like, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy a piece of whatever these people have. Nice. So how'd you get started with those guys? Um, I just randomly came there like uh, July 10th, 2000. 19 yeah and their chef was on the way out and I was like oh, I want to work for the kitchen and I'll do prep and things like that and um I had been there a couple times the space is like enormous so it was just like not typically the place where I would go like when Alex lived here we'd go to the skate we'd go to a uh, downtown park every Sunday and meet up with like Casey and we'd have coffee at a uh, Broadway and it's like a small shop where, you know, everybody's, it's just like a small local shop. Everybody's kind of like, what do you want? Um, <clears throat> but I had been to that place a couple of times and I was like, oh, they need somebody for the kitchen. This could be strange because I've always worked in kitchens that were like, you know, autonomous fucking local restaurants, like anywhere from like, you know, casual to casual fine dining and or like Thai food um so I was like all right this could be a thing and then I kind of spent a year and a half in a basement doing prep for this kitchen I'm like working like with the different departments and like getting to develop different relationships with people and I mean there's like 80 people that work there at any given time for the past two years even though like with all the transitions so um I don't know. It's just like the kitchen I've worked in where I was like treated kind of the best. Like people give a fuck how you feel every day. Just strange. But then there's like the same kind of set of problems with every local or whatever business, like miscommunication, this, that. But I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a good place to work. It's just, I don't know. It is what it is. So you people, started you started in 2019. How did, how is this past two years? Like, how did that go for you guys? Uh, like lockdown started, I was supposed to go to work like the day when lockdown started. And then they like sent out a message. It wasn't, I don't know if it was Slack then, but it was like some whatever, uh, like messaging thing at work. And they were like, don't worry about it. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, sick. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to hop on unemployment like everybody else. And I, I didn't know shit about that because I've been working since it was like 
13 this or that like landscaping fucking like grocery stores shit like that so i was just like i've never been given a dollar from the government so i'm gonna try that and i did that i tried to do that for like about six or seven weeks and i got like nothing and then like the day they asked me to come back um i think like two days later the lady called me and she was like hey you like kind of messed up on like your form and i was like tight well i'm going back to work so it doesn't really fucking matter and she was like you want some back pay and i was like yeah i'd absolutely hate that yeah give me that (laughs) um (laughs) so like i bought a used car out of it that's what i got out of that whole thing um Thank you, government. Yeah, no shit. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Obama. Um, <laughs> this cookie doesn't fit in the fucking... Uh, but, yeah, so, I don't know. I've been there ever since that happened, and um, just, I don't know, same dirt, different shirt. It's working, as I always know. So weird that they could just kind of... They're like, yeah, we got enough. You can buy a used car. Here you go. No problem. Like, they could yeah. pretty much do that for everyone, but... You know. Yeah, always. Yeah, communism. It's it's not a horrible idea. There's probably flaws in those schematics, but look at where we're at with this shit. Not much better as far as <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, depends depends what you're comparing it to, but just yeah. the, think things have been have changed radically over the course of two years. I think it's very different now. Yeah, for sure. Definitely feel strange been through a lot of strange shit um 38 so almost four decades but um i don't know it's not the worst that could be i think do you uh like would you compare it to like the before and after 9 11 thing i i always hear people make that comparison do you feel like you you probably remember it a little better than i do i was very young yeah yeah, so- yeah. um I definitely was not at school that day. Um, I was at home. Uh, I think I was like suspended probably. That makes total sense. Um, And I was like, holy shit, is this real? And my dad was like, it's fucking real. (laughs) I was like, how can you know that? And he's just like, what's your deal? I'm like, don't worry about my deal, dude. Like this is definitely nuts and it's happening physically on earth but like uh yeah exactly it Casey sounds- was like twin towers um yeah i don't know i was just like this seems like too fucked up with the amount of like eh, the, the security we have in this country with like military and stuff like it's a it's a policey place <laughs> seems like <laughs> might be a little bit of bullshit it's Something it smells. is a conspiracy. Come on. A- you all day, baby. It's, it's, Some it's, stinks it's, in it. It might be the U.S. government. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, it doesn't. It could, you know, whatever. Might I mean, another, just hearing you another, say like, uh, like, is this real? That's kind of how I felt when I started hearing about the virus. And I was like, are we serious? This is going to like, is this really going to wipe us out? Yeah. I mean. Either way, like when it first started happening, like I think it was uh, December, um, what, December 2000, was that? 2019. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend, Tara, was like, oh, this thing's happening. And like, uh, fuck, maybe it was, maybe it was China. Maybe it was China. <laughs> but um, she was like, oh, this, this thing is happening and it's like kind of catching on. And I was just like, whatever, dude um but then like of course like four months later they were like oh this thing's happening here and it's gonna like shut all this shit down it's like all right tight um i kind of knew about this a little bit i at least knew it was a thing that could happen but how the fuck could i know and what control over any of that do i have really other than like my first immediate thought was like great i'm not gonna go to work is what's gonna happen like like i said like with uh like unemployment like i was like i've never done that before in my life um i don't want to rely on that like the only money i can make is with my like arms and legs so i don't know like what the fuck i'm supposed to do i can't work from home i did like food shit 
always. So I don't know. It doesn't bother me though. And I don't feel very, I don't feel strange about it. Like strange, like, like what do you mean strange? I don't feel like the world is a different place or anything. Like, I don't know. It felt like weird at first being around like a shit ton of people and like, um, just being masked up was uh, fucking horrible because I always worked behind fire mm. <laughs> or like things on fire. So I was just like, God damn it. And then like, I'm like, I don't know. And I felt kind of uneasy about it, but um, I don't know. I think it's nuts that there are people that are still not vaccinated and they're like, that could fucking kill me in five years. And I'm like, everything's going to kill you in five years, dude. Like, can we go, can we like go to work without like maybe, I don't know, your fucking grandma getting sick and dying in two weeks? Like that might be awful, but let's worry about five years from now. Now, after pretty much ingesting everything awful are for the last like 30 fucking years, that is inevitably going to contribute to your fucking demise, like, which is inevitable anyways, so why don't you just get fucking vaccinated they're standing there with a cup of whiskey smoking a cigarette i'm worried about a vaccine yeah just like shooting up i don't know where this came from (laughs) fuck it but you know that shit's awful so what uh what what brand of vax did you go for oh god pfizer i think it was whatever whatever hand i was dealt man (laughs) (laughs) They had the J and J option for me, so I was one and done. That was appealing. One and done, baby. Sexy, nice. Rich. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna pee. Nice, nice. Oh, this guy pees too. <gasps> Would have never guessed. Yeah. <laughs> How was your day? It's going well. Still, Good. still pretty early. A pup pissed on the floor. I was not stoked. That's, that's I'm sorry. How going. No, it's fine. She's just a puppy. Do you guys work? What do you do? Uh, I'm a stagehand. So I basically set up concerts. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty uh, spotty right now in LA. Yeah. So, like, we're we're back to mass. So I don't, I don't really know how concerts are going to be moving forward. It's pretty... Yeah. Uh, pretty up in the air here i do freelance video work my most Very recent sick. project was a uh, music video in stockton california hey yeah it works out i mean covid sucked for all the production stuff that all shut down for a long time yeah sean was talking about it going back to masks sean san maria mm. yeah oh yeah yeah, because he's out here too. Yeah, right. He's in LA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Hollywood. And you, you, uh, you've known Ian Cop for a long time as well, right? Yeah, I've known Ian Cop forever. Yeah, Ian's uh, Ian's out here in SF with us. Oh, hi, Ian. I love you. Miss you. I was just skating with him last night. Oh, Ian. Oh boy. The only pediatrician I know. <laughs> oh man yeah i lived with ian he was one of the first roommates i had when i had a place in tallahassee uh that was when he had like long fucking his hair but like to his shoulders he wore uff's thrones they were gray um he did look like howard stern he had a he smoked a bunch (laughs) of weed we listened to the smiths a lot like uh yeah yeah, young Ian does have a big Howard Stern haircut going on. Yeah, he's got a he's got a little guy going. Was he always super tall, or did that happen at some point? And you were like, "Damn, Ian, you got really tall." He wasn't like, he, well, he didn't seem super tall to me. He just seemed like really lanky. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's always been lanky and tall. Yeah, it's Ian. Yeah, it's Ian Cop. His- so, around what year are you guys living together? Just, uh, just for uh 2003 2004 okay so that's right around the time you started filming well 
uh, what were you what were you skating during that time? Like, what were you skating? Like, were you filming for anything during that period? Um, yeah, I think uh, we did like right before around that time. It was shadowed from society, which was Scott Metz from Orlando made a, a a blade film. It was like it was a fucking homie video from Orlando, but um, we did that. And then, like, directly after that, it was Road to Nowhere. I, and could, I could see that after doing all those gaps you did in Shattered from Society. It's, like, pretty nuts, some of the double sets. It was pretty sick to see. And how, So, 38. Now, how old were you when you did that? I'm doing bad. Uh, 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, something like that. Um, I mean, my friend Kyle Walling made all the videos of, like, me, Sean Santa, um, our friend Josh McDonald, Russ Brown um we did a bunch of videos in tampa growing up and like i was doing the same shit sean was doing his thing but like you know skating rails too uh but i was jumping gaps all fucking time um like all all those people inspired me the most them and people that skated for usd and um uh it was like england video and coup d'etat really like, like and mind, ga- mind game videos like we were just like trying to keep up with all our buddies and then i'm like damn if we had the proper filmer like we gonna be right there fucking with you you know like i don't know so when did <laughs> johnny boy start making videos because he he really knew how to make a video johnny boy yeah i don't know casey might be able to tell you more about that when did johnny boy start making videos like shortly before, uh, like just shortly before I met him, like, like when when did you and Sophie go visit me and Sean? Oh, that was like two thousand nine or ten. So I want to say like two thousand seven eight. Okay, so like somewhere around there, eight probably. Sure. Because his first video, like. It was in the works, and I went there to visit with Point State, but then he got it close. So I like, remember that. And then that was it. And then he just made the part of me, and his my ass, like, has all this footage that just got thrown away for, to make a sequel to that first video. Crazy. He was over it. He was just rather hit the fucking gravity bomb. I'm serious, dude. The goofball. <laughs> so is so is after road to nowhere where like rosie's kind of picked you up yeah yeah because uh like me and sean had gone up to birmingham and skated with the rejects people and um like got got pretty close with charles and um and like well, with Trace too, Trace Taylor and Sean Engler and Wes Driver. And I don't know, I just got a call randomly. I think I was still living with Ian at the time um, when Charles hit me up and he was like, he probably hit Ian up because I didn't have a fucking phone at the time. Like, I was just like, whatever, dude. Um, and he was like, you want to skate for Rosie's? And I was like, all right. I, yeah, I guess. It's just like a real thing I was skeptical about it like I was like what are they gonna do for me like what am I gonna do for them but I was gonna do it anyway so I was like I guess I'll do it for them and what did they do for you gave me free shit um there was also I went to some skate competitions got per diem JJ would give me per diem that was tight um but for the most part I feel like it was like the Birmingham guys like kind of uh doing doing the whole thing but also i had no relationship that uh was between like charles and john and it seems like charles was kind of the person i communicated with and john was the person that communicated with rosies i'm sure there was a bunch of bullshit going on between all of them but um i got no part of that yeah it's by my bed but yeah i don't know i was just like all right. I, I had high hopes for it, but um, kind of, I don't know. I feel like I made a pro part 
as an amateur for a company basically you did like i feel like i road to nowhere was a pro part but oh, yeah that, that was the your face the music part yeah and i was just like all right kind of got no love but i kind of expected that because it i could feel that real wedding was kind of on its way out so why the fuck would i get anything yeah i mean right around that time 2010 it's just like fizzling no, fully out no it's way earlier than that right it's like 2005 six yeah yeah 2006 <laughs> 2005 that's when i think uh face of music came out and then we started working on uh meantime with brandon oh i guess i'm i'm jumping to like when you're hanging out in arizona and then you're like skate and like your 90 second edit oh that was like i couldn't believe they even wanted to do a thing like, I was just like, why? I don't know. But James was like, that's the coolest dude ever. So he was just like, yeah, we'll fly you, fly you out here and, you know, film with Jenkins and do that thing. And it was fun. Like, it was, I surprised myself. Like, I, I, like I wasn't skating a lot at that time. So I couldn't believe that I filmed something in, like, basically seven days, 10-day period, but, like, seven days with all like the breaks because i was just like i need a fucking break like not because not skating you know like, yeah it's a lot like, and they're it's like 110 degrees and they're taking me a bunch of ditches i'm like i don't know what the fuck to do here well you did well yeah, and thanks just just off the random that that toe drag is so ahead of its time you like toe drag and then take that the toe yeah the little little staircase yeah. Yeah, that was sick. Like, it's just ahead Thank of you. time. No problem. Yeah. There's a lot of other really good ones in there, but, like, that one specifically, like, stood out to me. That's a thing I used to do at the skate park. If I was going towards an obstacle and I was going over a pyramid, that was the thing I'd do on the flat to go fakey. Oh, okay, cool. So, so it just felt natural for you. Yeah, it, it was a way to turn around. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like, yeah, it's like I'm skipping the pyramid to go to the quarter pipe or the thing. Did you did you pull that like on your own or did you see that somewhere else before you started doing it or just or like you said it just felt natural? I don't know if I saw it somewhere else. I probably did. I'm realizing in the last like probably like six or seven years when I watch like old shit like shit from like 2002 and before like I'm like holy fuck like I kind of stole that thing. Can you, like, some, can you give us some specifics not necessarily but if we just like hung out for 24 hours and watch a bunch of old videos i could be like stole that thing stole that thing didn't know it because at the time i was skating skate parks like before that time i was like kind of a park rat um i could skate street too but we made our videos and no one gave a fuck about him park was truly fun because you could do anything you want there it's made for skating um but when i watch like old videos i'm just like oh shit that's a thing that like dl did but he did on like something way cooler or uh you know so it always had to do with like i don't know fp uh fp usd and fucking england there's always like some little tie in there with me so those were your main influences uh yeah your, it was like all like the, it was like all, all this like the style cats and like the late like 90s like those are the people that I look up to the most. Cause I was like, Oh, they're doing what like so-and-so did. They did the same trick, but this is memorable because it looks awesome and they're dress cool and shit. And everything gets developed more and more as like more people keep pushing, like taking something from the past and then pushing it forward. So. Yeah, for sure. Did you always dress with tight pants? Like, no, no. Was there like a conscious period when you switched? Um, it was kind of a thing that uh, I guess it was in like from 2000 to 2002. Um, just me, Sean, we were getting into like, you know, a bunch of like old rock and roll and shit. And also around that time in the late 90s, like people were starting to wear like a little bit slimmer stuff. And um I don't know it just kind of like came about with like music and like just looking at people we liked in music and I don't know just 
kind of became a thing. It's like, I don't know. What better time to wear like small clothes than when you're fucking like tiny and in the best shape of your life. And like, you're like, I can wear whatever the fuck I want and make it look cool if I just do it correctly. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. When me and Taylor were that age, we were looking slim. Those pants were so tight. Oh, yeah. Put them on wet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, was I think there, was a po- there was a point where I started to look at my clips and tight pants. I was like, wow, my legs look huge in these pants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like I, this look. I, I kind of always had that too because I always kind of had big thighs. And I'm just like, uh, oh, thunder thighs. And uh, I was just like, yeah, I'm so fucking tiny. Whatever, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm like 130 pounds and like fucking awesome. Good, right? yeah. yeah. I don't care if you can see the veins in my cock. <laughs> <laughs> a little preview for the boys yeah check this out him too <laughs> so what uh like in florida you guys were the tallahassee crew like was was there like another crew in florida like like the chase brothers or like were you guys like close or was that yeah um kind of uh well scott metz um filmed me we filmed Sean a little bit and a few of our other friends at Tallahassee and he's from Orlando. So we were like kind of uh, the Chase brothers and like all the homies, you know, mm-hmm. like we were all we were all in that video that he made. Um, but I mean, like growing up before that, it was always kind of like the Miami people. Um, it's like Chris Morocco, Chris Padilla, Frankie. Um, I don't know we'd only see each other at like small events that went on in Florida. Um, but yeah, like the Orlando kids were always like pretty close around like later teens and in Tampa, we were like, those kids are batshit crazy because <laughs> they fucking were and they still are, but they're grown now and calmed down. But um, yeah, they were fucking nuts. Like they would be like, fight security guards and shit like we like people we were run away from they were just like i'm gonna punch you in the eye and film it <laughs> and i'm like holy shit that's assault that's fucking crazy but uh disney world fuck it i don't know <laughs> punching D- disney world security guards yeah, no just just disney world in general orlando it's like the whole place seems like disney world if you don't live there mm. but uh yeah those kids are nuts and they would do like insane fucking things like i'm like pretty sure i'm supposed to be from there but i'm not so i was like the guy that wanted to like jump off every fucking thing and just be wild but yeah those kids were uh nuts and pretty close to us florida still yeah. got quite a bit of uh scenes like in different parts even today it's never really Does stopped it? really oh yeah there's still quite a few people in florida really pushing skating yeah notably uh pablo porta he's in uh yeah he's in out to tampa right Where, where is i he? think so yeah i know who you're talking Fort, about yeah yeah, yeah. Fort something yeah i think bashi pope's down there now too yeah he's oh, really yeah. yeah he seems like he'd be in south florida yeah it's fort lauderdale miami I'm sure we're like not mentioning a bunch of people that we should mention. I know there's more down there. I, I was at the powwow. I saw the Florida people. They're definitely down there. Well, there you go. Thanks. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. They know they're there. They're not looking at the rest of the country to be like, validate my existence. <laughs> we never did that. They're so like, everybody when, thinks they're fucking crazy. When did, you, uh, when did you leave Florida for the first time, like to move somewhere else? Um, I think... When I was 21, I moved to Los Angeles with Sean. Yeah. We lived in Hollywood. Um, and I think ooh, maybe. I don't, I don't know if we were finishing Road to Nowhere. I know I definitely like was in um, the house that uh, JC Rowe and fucking Negretti used to live in. I know I watched Road to Nowhere shit on the computer in the garage. 
Uh, they had a name for that house, right? There was like a specific yeah. Name. I, I can't remember, remember. what it was. Sean yeah. would know, but okay. I did. I don't know what the fuck it was. That's where I got Kaya's uh, White Thrones. Um, that's where we watched uh, the Gator documentary, and Sean got his song for Meantime. Um, like sitting in that fucking hot ass garage. Dude, when's the last time you've spoken to Kaya Tursky? No, I've ne- we've never talked. We oh, sat in really? the car together. Yeah, but oh. we never talked. Okay, we talked. Um, no, I, I haven't talked to her in fucking forever. I don't even, I don't know what the hell we'd talk about. Like skiing, right? Like, why aren't you doing that anymore? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. That seems pretty sick. It seems fun. It looks like skating, but have you, you never skied before? No. It is so fun. It's so I fast. know I could do it. We can I know all you do can. It. It's no, the thing course. we do on snow. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel but, about ice skating? Ice skating's rad. Yeah. Do a little fast slide action. Woo. Oh, yeah. I've been here for 30 time. minutes and I've got my fast slide 15 feet. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Ice skating's sick. I can't remember the last time I went ice skating. Do you have a? Do you have any idea when the last time you went ice skating was? Uh, this. It's got to be within the last like four years. Yeah, definitely. I was with my ex. We went out to some place out north in the winter time, and uh, there was a like they had a rink outside, and we just it was like a fucking. It was so tiny, just going around in circles. I'm like, all right, it's a skating rink. I've got enough. I was fast sliding the whole time. So how long did you uh, stay in LA with Sean? Uh, we were probably, I was there for like maybe a year. He stayed there afterwards. He definitely stayed there afterwards. That's when mean time happened. Hmm. Like I came back to Tallahassee and I was just like, I need a fucking reset. And he like kind of couch hopped. And then stayed near Brandon. And then we were, then we were all of a sudden meeting up in Kansas City. Well, like out in the burbs in Kansas to do meantime. So yeah, I wasn't there that long, but felt like a long fucking time. Isn't it weird how that happens? Like places that you stay for such a short period, like end up having like such a lasting effect, but like places that you're in for like five years, like, they like feel like a couple minutes yeah fucking strange totally and it's kind of the reverse too like as i get older maybe this happens to everyone it feels like holy shit it's been two years but when i was like younger i was just like oh my god can we get through this shit like how fucking many days do i have to do this thing like i don't know i was impatient but now i'm just like happy i'm alive every day and like get to do things and i kind of like forget like how long i've been in a place yeah maybe that's what's happening maybe i've been in la for like five years right now and it feels like i moved here like a couple weeks ago i don't know how old are you i'm 28 now okay yeah taylor same you got a decade on us Ooh, love to switch with you um so you after the meantime what you you stayed in florida for a while what brought you to arizona just uh talking to james johnson Hmm. yeah you ended up living out there correct or no no i just Uh, went there to film that thing i was there for 10 days oh damn yeah it's 10 days the longest amount of time i've spent in arizona how like so he just started hitting you up and saying you should come out and skate or were you skating at the time like because i wasn't really skating at the time but um god how did me and jenkins huh Huh? he flew me out there yeah Yeah. but i think it was like a thing with sorry i'm talking to casey no No, it was a it was a thing with john jenkins yeah he just wanted to Yeah, 
Yeah. Jump off a roof. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. It was like a random fucking revolution. They were doing a thing and kind of like asked me if I wanted to do it. And it's like, yeah, sure. I, as a fan, it, it made sense for me because that was like after the meantime, we were, that was your next section. So it was cool to see you just skate again. Wait, wait was Thrill in between that or? When oh, oh thrill. Good point. There we go. Thank you. Boom. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> uh, or sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah, Thrill. Uh, that's, that's the connector right there. That's the way. Um, uh, thrill. It also felt like a Florida video. It was like a Florida video after I'd done two not Florida videos. Um, <laughs> so what's that mean? Yeah, what do you mean by a Florida yeah, video? Yeah. You ever lived in a place your whole life and then done a video there and you're like, eh, it's, a, it's a fucking, you know, it's a Detroit video. Like, I don't know, it's a fucking homey hmm. video. Like, it doesn't oh, yeah. feel like... Unless wherever you're from, there's a filmer that, like, distributes shit, like, all over the place and it's, like, cool. Mm. I don't know. Thrill was cool, but I wasn't like, I was just kind of like, all right, I'll do this thing. I don't know. It it wasn't something that you were like super invested in at the time. No, not at all. I was just like, if you want to come here and film this, I'll go out with you. I will take time off work, go out with you, show you some places, and then try to figure something out. Sure. And I mean, for, for as an outsider, it didn't feel so much like a homie video because you had like a pretty sick cast. There's you, Joey Chase, Jeremy Spiro is in it too. Yeah. I don't know. Those guys are all radical. I just didn't feel great about my part. I didn't think it was like, I don't know, noteworthy, but it had a lot to live up to for me personally because the things I had done right before it were fucking awesome and it was not like incredible. So. Not to speak on the whole video, it just didn't. You're I, talking about your own personal. Yeah, my my about. my thing. Like I just couldn't fully give a shit because I was just like, and that was right after Rosie's too, and I was just like, kind of pissed off and like, fucking. I don't know. What had had that all yeah. go with Rosie's? Because that's kind of through the whole time through meantime you're with Rosie's, right? Uh, yeah, it was on the way out. Mm. Yeah, it was like wh- around the time when Charles was like, Rosie's is done. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? And then I got really no explanation. I was just like, dude, like I did this fucking am part for them. Like, where the fuck's my goddamn skate? Like, what are you doing here? Why did I make that part at all? Like, I was pissed. I was fucking pissed. I was defeated. I was like, God damn it. I counted on this one fucking thing. It's like just listening to people. Like my dad was like, you should have signed something. And I was like, yeah, I fucking know it. Like I should have done something better. I should have just been smarter basically, but I wasn't. I skated for that company. No one knew what the fuck was going on. It was like classic miscommunication shit. Um, I was dumb and I just skated my ass off and then I got jack shit so I was like alright fuck skating were there other Sorry. people that were on Rosie's that like were getting something more from it not necessarily but I knew mm-hmm. what I deserved like I fucking deserve to get something from it what do you uh, do you like as far as something like what, what would you have like, uh, like what would be ideal from like something like that, like a rollerblading sponsor? Maybe five questions, any sort of opportunity to move forward. I got nothing. I got a call from Charles that was like, Rosie's just done. And I was just like, sick. I'm going to go to fucking work then, I guess. Like, I don't know what to do with that information other than feel defeated and failed and just move the fuck on like i don't know shouldn't people like that are in a position of power to like wouldn't they reach out maybe they would have if they thought it was worth a shit but i guess they didn't or it slipped their mind 
because I was just like, fuck it. I guess I'm not worth it through these like few avenues, like for anybody to give a fuck enough to be like, hey, do you maybe want to? It's simple. It's fucking easy. And I met all these people and they know I'm easy to talk to. I might have not have been like the best temperament at the time because it was fucking wild. But like, it's just like, dude, like throw me a bone. Ask me a question. Ask me two questions. I'll give you an answer worth examining. Like, but I got nothing. So it's just like, all right, fuck all you guys. So even after making very iconic sections, they they didn't reach out at all. They weren't like, hey, we like what you're doing. It was just like, you did it. And they just were like a wall, basically. I mean, you chalked the Charles. I'm sure he said something, but. I mean, I don't really remember anybody being like, hey, we could do this thing or you could do this thing or like, let's work towards this. Like, I don't remember anything like that. But at the same time, honestly, Charles could have been like, fuck everybody and i would have been like yeah like i don't fucking know mm. but like because he was a big influence just made skating really fun but um i don't know i don't think at the time like i was really given any options like anywhere to go because i think somebody close to me would have been like hey man you really ought to check this shit out or like yeah, maybe you should, uh, but I don't remember anything like that because I don't feel like I have any missed opportunities there. I just feel like it was kind of like, I don't know, it's like an empty end. It's crazy so, that uh, it just moved you around so much, just like the like rollerblading in general and then to get nothing out of it seems, yeah, it's very, very odd. I mean, I'm not mad about it. I was for a long time, but I don't know. It's life. It is what it is. It was fun. I mean, it's not that fun anymore. It hurts now, but <clears throat> so I don't do it all the time. And I'm like out of fucking not season for that shit. I'm out of shape for that shit. Like if I put my hands down at the skate park, I'm fucking done for the day. Like I don't even know what skates I like, feel comfortable in anymore. Like I just don't. I don't know. It's not fucking, it's not my dream. I don't give a shit. Like it just, I still have skate skate dreams, like pretty much four or five days a week. Those are fun as fuck, but actually skating. I'm just like, what are we doing? I don't know. You said, you you said two things. You were like, you're not mad about how it moved you around, but you, you were mad about it for a while. Yeah, I was mad about it for a long time, of course. I was pissed off. My whole 20s, I was like, fuck, everybody, I fucking deserve this. I have this, like, sense of entitlement because I, like, did all this shit. And, you know, it was kind of just, like, I was pretty fucking good and, like, doing, I was skating at a level where four years before that, somebody would have got taken care of in at least some way. But it doesn't matter now because the people that I was looking up to aren't doing shit. So who fucking cares? But at the time I was like, dude, this should last longer than like two and a half fucking years. Like, I'm like, I don't know. On the internet with people constantly like talking about shit that I did. And I'm just like, now I have like no motivation to do anything else. Like, because no one wants to film. No one's, I don't know, wanting to do any fucking thing with me. Might've been because of, how i was at the time i don't fucking know <laughs> just like uh like that kind of uh angry 20 year old self is what you mean as far as like how you were yeah like a fucking guy that would jump off everything and be like fuck you or like be confused or like you know like i don't know just a young kid like i just wanted to do what i did and then get taken care of because of it just, you know, didn't, didn't really happen. I mean, honestly, if I were in the position of power then and I were with me, I would have had to have a serious understanding and a talk or I wouldn't have had shit to do with me either. You know, mm. I was a fucking liability. I was just like waiting to get hurt. Yeah. That's... But I, but I didn't get hurt. That's not what ended it. Just 
me being a fucking liability probably ended it. Or maybe I just got overlooked, which I find really fucking hard to believe. Yeah, that, that seems pretty hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, the specific videos that you were in, it's kind of like if you weren't, if you did overlook them, then you weren't even looking at skating in general at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can only speculate. Well, I'd be, be on the other end, but <clears throat> it would have been, I don't know. I would have been. I mean, I, I say this now that there's like, I think there's 95% of like skating and like the culture and everything that really doesn't fully know what's going on as far as like what they're looking at or who's doing what, or just like a lot of the culture, like the older generations of skating. And then there's like maybe 5% that really know what's going on right now. Like you'd be in like the 5% at the time, even, I feel like that kind of always exists where it's like a certain amount that is really focused on, pushing skating and like certain aesthetics and styles yeah but, but that's a very small margin of people yeah yeah i don't know i thought it was but i felt kind of like thrown out of the loop it was weird like i was like i'm fucking like in the shit and then like all of a sudden i felt like i was like kind of thrown outside i don't know then like Jeez. volo started to happen and I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, what's this fucking shoe boot? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. It got us where we are. And then Volo is like this long fucking ordeal. Then turned into them. I'm happy for John. Definitely. No matter what, happy for JJ. Like, it's sick that he has his own thing. I'm just like, God, if this was skateboarding, think how many thems we'd fucking have. Like, dude. Or like anything else, BMX, scooters. Uh, I want to be proud of our sport, but I am not, I don't know. I'm not like disappointed about it or like pissed about it. I'm just like, I don't give a shit. I just don't care. <laughs> it just like kind of like it was a, time in my life and a thing i enjoy doing and i still obviously love it and dream about it but it's just not like a not a real thing and it might be but i don't have the opportunity to be a part of making it real i mean i think the biggest part of making it real is like when you make your appearances in kcmo it's like that is some of the most real stuff because like the whole crew of you guys it wasn't like or it didn't seem in the video like it was like an industry thing or like a brand. It was just like this group of amazing people that wanted to do something together and enjoy it together. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I moved here, all those people were here and it was like fun for about a year and a half until everybody decided to just move away. <laughs> like that's why I moved here. That's why me and Sean moved here. Like there were a bunch of people skating and filming and shit. And there were like too many people to go to the same place. Like be like, you guys go here, you guys go here. But then like shortly after that, everybody's like, I want to fucking open up a disco. And like, I want to go do this thing, and, like a magazine. And I'm just like, all right, tight. Like, I don't know. I, even at that point, like I was just like kind of reaching for it, but I don't know. It's kind of been a, uh, I feel like after my like prime time, it was kind of like slowly dying a little bit anyways. I just feel like I got fucked. Uh, you mentioned that you are like not angry with rollerblading anymore, right? Yeah. So do you have any advice for people to not get jaded? Have a backup plan. Okay. Have something in your life you're interested in that will pay your bills. Do not think that you're gonna make a badass part and fucking like get paid and like have all these advantages and shit and opportunities. Just have a fucking backup plan. Like if you think that this is going to pay your way, you're sorely fucking mistaken. Like have your life and then have this make time for it that correlates with your life 
that actually makes you a living and like makes you happy otherwise. Guy of food, but I don't really want to be doing that shit. But I can do it for a living. But just have a solid plan behind skating. Like at least for the next until we see things looking differently. I want to see a list of the people like because there are people now that make their living through working in skating industry. Well, yeah, in different capacities. But I want to know like the actual number of people that are actually that actually have that as their lifestyle. Because it can't be I like. Is it like a 200 people in the world? I don't know. Is that a lot? That seems like I'm putting too many out there. Yeah. Do you think Jeff Akers gets paid solely from razors? I I would think so. I love that dude. Yeah, me too. He's. he's I can watch him skate a practice rail all goddamn day. All day. Woo! Incredible. Shout out, Jeff. Your Your style's cool. Your dress cool. One of the best PVC skaters there is. He's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that he does, and I hope he does make all of his money from working at Razors. Well, part of it I'm going to message him right after this. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, part of it is definitely the scooter distribution. I don't know exactly what goes on with that, but it's not th- like fully through rollerblading, but it's through that warehouse. You know what I mean? Good point. <laughs> what do you guys skate? You skate USDs. Yeah. And yeah. what do you skate? I skate thems. Thems. Which ones? I have the Danny Beers right now. Nice. Yeah. They're getting all yellowy because they're clear and I sweat a lot in my feet. And you know. Just dye them purple Kool-Aid. It'll be awesome. <laughs> what is it? Do you have skates currently? Yeah, I have a pair of uh, Colts in my car, and then I have a old ass pair of Majestic Twelve sitting somewhere in the house. I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't know what feels comfortable. The Colts feel pretty comfortable, honestly. Colts That's a really solid. comfortable boot. I always love the Colt. Yeah, it's like wide enough, and the six seven is like short. Like I usually wear. Like in Rosies, I wear. Uh, an eight nine but those are narrow so i don't know colts are cool they look sick so you're like john John elliott you're like a like a seven and a half right yeah i'm an eight basically it depends on the liners that go in there uh how tall are you (laughs) uh five seven okay yeah five six Five seven always, depends. It's hard if to I tell. stand like this, or if I stand like this. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the measurement changes. So do you uh, do you intend on uh, attending any other Blade events? I I think I saw you at twenty eighteen at Blade Cup. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were crewed up. I saw the Florida crew, you, Ian, and Sean, hanging. Yeah, I don't think so. It's, no. No. It's like. Why would I, I if I'm gonna take time off work, I want to go somewhere and like I don't know, eat good food and I don't want to stay in motels and fucking go to a blade thing and it's like a million people, it's overwhelming and it's gonna be like this little circus that I've been to a thousand fucking times. I don't know. It'd be cool to see a bunch of it'd be cool to see you guys like randomly or like go to the skate park on like the Sunday after the event, but uh, yeah, the Negretti session is always really nice. Yeah. But yeah. ultimately, the whole thing is like, kind of, I don't know, it's not my world. The The actual event itself is, I guess I, I, I see what you mean by circus-like, but the amount of random people is, is definitely overwhelming. The Sunday oh, yeah. is nice because that's, that's everyone. That's the homies. Yeah. It's not like the mall foot traffic. Yeah, it's the five percent on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, the ninety-five shows up to the event. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're like, "Oh, let's go get fucking fish tacos. Oh, let's go over here and fucking spear spill a fucking nine dollar sixteen ounce Bud Light on everything." <laughs> like, all right, sick. 
everybody's all sweaty i don't know it's fucking it's all sweaty for <laughs> real dude, he's rubbing on people nasty as hell i don't know yeah wanted to get your opinion on that what on blake cup or just events in general i know s- some people avoid blade cup and go to other events or vice versa depending what on what events exist they got the Bashi Pope skate off that's going to happen in the end of August. Oh yeah, I would love to go to that. See, that's that 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 Dude, changed any, your answer. Any excuse to go to New York? Come on. <laughs> so there, <laughs> that's so funny. You're like, no, no blade events at all, and I was like, oh yeah, there's one in New York. Like, yeah, but out. at the same time, like, I'm not, I'm not taking off work to go to New York to go to a blade comp. If I'm going to New York, I'm going to, like, eat dumplings and ride bikes. I mean, that's – you get to – I think the added bonus is going around the Blade event is you can eat the dumpling and ride your bikes with your friends from all over the place after. You can't do both. No? <laughs> skip the contest and just wait for the Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we've talked about skipping the contest and just going to New York during the same time so they're around all the people. Yeah. I mean, like that back in the day, I like definitely kind of suggested that. Like, I was like, why, why don't we just skip this and go like see the city? Nah, this'll... fuck it. I'll hang at a hotel and then I'll hang at the skate park. This has been the sixth year in a row that they are going to have it at the same exact skate park. So that's the one part... with the ledges and the yeah, like square the sa- rails. Same one. Those square rails look fun. They're a little hard. They're good square bars as far as square bars but go. Everybody's fucking hauling oats. So, like, you go like fast enough, they're low. And they're pretty Oop. short once you're going fast. Yeah, exactly. The whole thing is downhill, too. So, you don't even have to like run at it or anything. You just try. Keeps... Yeah. yeah. And then that, that bank that goes to a curve is all like bricked out, right? And painted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thing looks sick. The, yeah. The bricks are nice. They're like real bricks instead of like that, like prefab, like printed shit. Yeah. yeah that, that's a nice touch. Oh, when I think of uh, that competition, I think of Montre immediately. He's, he's a, that's a good person for that crowd. Yeah. I love Montre. Yeah. He's great. When's the last time you've been to New York? Uh, 2009. What'd you, what'd you, what brought you there? Uh, just friends, road bikes. And no, you know what? It was a, that was the first time. <laughs> uh, two, that was 2011. I had a girlfriend that went there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and she was part of a dance company. Erica. Hi. Erica. That time I just rode trains around and I brought big wheel skates, but I never skated around. Sean went there too, but he big wheel skated around. I hung out with my girlfriend the whole time. It was totally awesome. We're still together. We're not. <laughs> so you got, even, you got the experience. Totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so who's, who's living in your house with you guys right now? Me. Just you? Yeah. Oh, Casey's okay. just over here getting his bike. Oh. It's yeah. Left oh. his bike over here last time. I put it together for him. Pretty good at bikes. That's a good friend. Yeah. No, that's not good bad. Friend. Dude, I Damn, was so it's just you and a you and a whole house? It's me and an apartment. It's not oh, a okay. house. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't sure. Oh, if I had a house, we'd be talking to all the animals right now. This would be a lot sillier. Be like me rolling around on the ground. Pig. You have Stuff a pig like if you had if you had a house that's that's in your sights. <clears throat> no, it'd be a bunch of dogs. Okay. Maybe like a few cats. Definitely a bunch of dogs. Smush face dogs, English bulldog, Frenchie. Ooh, everything that farts in your face. <laughs> the ones that the silent, the silent fart ones. Oh, yeah, or dogs. or not silent. Sure, yeah. just like sorry, <laughs> and I'm like, I fucking love you, dude. They have such a good fart face after they do it too. It's just so wide eyed and like, yeah, I know what I did. Yeah, their face looks like a fart. <laughs> they're they look at you and they're like, 
You're like, oh, that's fucking Charlie. Almost proud of it. Yeah. It's like, did you see it? <laughs> like, I fucking heard it and smelled it, dude. No, and usually when they look at you, they angle the butthole right at you, too. It's like the face on the butthole. Oh, yeah. It opens up. All to three dimension. Eyes, yeah. It's a fucking fifth dimension in there. What is going on here? <laughs> That's my buddy. Any other uh, animals in the sites? No? Yeah? No, I don't think so. No. It's a bunch of I cats want, over at my chicken. girlfriend's house. I want chickens and roosters. Or oh, yeah. yeah. If you get a rooster, you're never going to sleep again past fucking 5 a.m. Dude, I got one next door. It is gnarly. Wake up to that randomly. Yeah. Good. I, I don't mind it, actually. It feels like you're on vacation sometimes. Like you're in tropical, like a different place, you know? I can understand that. Yeah. I, I, would, uh, I, I wake think up it's... for work at about 2.45 in the morning. So oh. I work at a bakery. Whoa. So if I had a rooster, I would wake it the fuck up. <laughs> I'd be like, hey! <laughs> and then it'd be like, what the fuck? And I'd be like, it's time to get up, dude. What we, a, gotta wake, we gotta wake the neighbors up now. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your what's your day look like if you're getting up at 2 a.m. every day? Uh go in on Thursday and Saturdays. I laminate dough. You guys know what that is? No. no. Yeah, no one does. Um, you know what croissants are? Mm -hmm. Okay. I take two pieces of dough. Well, I take one piece of dough, cut it in half, take a brick of European butter. European style butter, put it in between the two layers of dough, put it through a sheeter a bunch of times, twist it 90 degrees over and over, fold it like a book, not exactly like a book, but um, I put it through a machine a bunch of times till it's all incorporated without breaking. So it has to be like perfect temperature. And then later I roll it out completely until it's like super duper thin, cut it into whatever size I need. And then I shape it into different types of croissants. And then the other, but Friday and Sundays, I do prep. So I like work on all kinds of other random shit, make like financier dough and make financiers, build a bake, basically like bake a bunch of baked goods for the next day for like nine different other shops. So how, how long is that day from two to like, how long is that shift? Uh, usually I go in there. Well, I wake up at 245, but mm -hmm. I go in at... 345 or 4 and then it usually lasts until 2 to 3 in the afternoon. I do that 4 days a week. Wow. Yeah. That's a intense morning. Yeah, it's um not a lot of doing anything other than that. It's a lot. For I'm like thinking about like baking at home. I'm like, yeah, once you put it in the oven you just wait, but I'm like he's making thousands of pastries yeah and not even like i'm not putting shit in the oven that day like i'm getting all the dough ready that takes fucking six hours and then i'm shaping everything then that goes on a racks it goes in these proof boxes those sit there overnight go through two different like program things and then they get put in the oven in the morning like i don't even until the next day around like uh, 6 a.m. I don't see what I did yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning. So what time do you go to bed and start having skate dreams if you're getting up at two? Um, I go to bed at around between seven and eight. And then I have skate dreams like 45 minutes before I wake up. Then I wake up mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, fuck skating, dude. <laughs> no, um, yeah. I do have skate dreams a lot, though. It's wild. In those skate dreams, are you doing tricks or are you just skating fast? Sometimes. I have skate dreams that I used to have when I was like a teenager, which I'm at the skate park. I'm at Central Skate Park in St. Pete, um, which was called like 788 later and it closed a long time ago. But um, sometimes I like go up the mini ramp and then I'll just like float away and then like land on the other deck and I'm like, fuck, I can't, I can't fucking um but sometimes i'll just like be skating random things that are like i don't know like random ledges and shit and it's fun 
Has that yeah. always been a thing for you? Yeah, totally. Okay, dreams. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have bike dreams too. Weed? No, no. Um, I'll smoke weed occasionally. Not really though. Like in a year, I'll probably smoke weed four times. Okay. Yeah, because um, I rarely dream. Oh, I have, it's definitely due to the, the consumption of marijuana. Yeah. That's kind of a great idea. Do you sleep well? Uh yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Weed makes me feel like self-conscious. Oh yeah. Like I'm just like, I'll be in my place by myself and I'm just like. Like, I don't know. I just like get paranoid and I'm just like, is that the guy fucking, what is happening? I can't, did I hear something? I feel that. I definitely yeah. feel that. Yeah. It comes and goes for me, but it's worth not having the dreams. <laughs> just, just work through it. Yeah, I'm still, I'm a fan of the weed. Yeah. I wish I could smoke weed and like be awesome at it. Seems fun. Yeah, it's it's got to, it's got it has its pros and cons. I think sometimes I I avoid it because I know it's going to make me far less productive. There's always that. I feel like when I smoke weed, I just put on some tunes or like usually headphones, and then I'm like, this place is going to be fucking spotless. <laughs> yeah, Dude. I know that feeling. You like, like use that paranoia to like fuel the, the the cleaning frenzy. I'm like, look how fucking dirty this kitchen is. <laughs> it has potential. Yeah, that, that that is a good time. Doesn't happen as much as it should. Nice chin, bud. Thank you. You've been working on that. No. How do I no, work yeah. on that? doing chin-ups yeah what kind of car did the government buy you <laughs> Ooh, a uh 2004 hyundai sonata it's right over there you can't see it but <laughs> you wish you could <laughs> <laughs> she got a name he got a name he, no he got a name they uh bike rack <laughs> <laughs> You named it bike track? No, I don't name my fucking cars. What the hell am I? I don't know. Bar I barely name animals. Cat. Cat. This is a good cat. name for a dog. Yeah. You just named your cat cat? I don't have a cat. Oh. Welcome to my world. Talking to cats that aren't there. Yeah. Get away from me. So who else, uh, like, who else uh, from, is there anyone else from Florida that lives in uh, Kansas City right now, or is it just you and Casey? Just me and Casey, yeah. No one else now. It's not, no bladers here, really. There, I mean, there are bladers here. Dude, uh, you got fucking, that dude, sex all day. <laughs> Duncan? Yeah. He skates. Yeah, Dun Duncan lives here. He lives out in Kansas, though. So. Shout out to Duncan. He's got a little bit of time before he comes here. But uh, yeah, shout out to Duncan. Shout Duncan's to going there? No, no, no. He'll, he'll, oh. he'll be around. He'll be around for a little bit. Yeah. The sex tapes. Sex. <laughs> Everything is sex. It's a different take on skating. Yeah, I know. He loves garnish. I can't tell if he's a chef or a porn producer. A little bit of both, my friend. What makes you hungrier than sex? Good point. That is a good point. Wedding, funeral, <laughs> food. Somebody's going to want to fuck. <laughs> um, who else is out there? It's still, uh, Chris and B is out there, right? Yeah, still. Chris Candia? No. Yeah. He lives in New Mexico. Oh, no shit. Yeah. No one's out here anymore. 
Oh. Yeah, Ruth, thought you're still there. Oh, I wish Chris was here right now. I'd give him a hug, sweaty hug. You I'm not sweaty. A, you, he would yeah, be sweaty. You, you get also. Oh, the guy word. I think when I stayed with you guys, you lived with Sean and was there one other person that lived with you guys? It was Sean and Casey, but I don't think Casey was there when you guys were here. Okay. That was like kind of a like a year after I moved here. Yeah, about then, because I remember I came and stayed at the Haitian house, I think a year before that. Yeah. Did you guys sleep in a van out front? Or did you uh, sleep inside? We did. You let us inside. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, but I was like, I don't remember like a bunch of people laying around. Like Jan Welch was like the one person I remember from like skating that like laid all over our couch. <laughs> I remember seeing Jan's feet. It's like, God damn it. Are you hungry? <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you let us uh, lay out on your couches. We were, I think we were only there for one night. Yeah, it was very short. Yeah. Was that when you were on that, uh, that tour with all the, the boys? Yeah, at that point, it was just me, Joey Adams, and uh, Dustin. That came oh, on the, on the way back. Yeah. Okay. You skated with us. Got yeah. Some clips of you. Oh, yeah. What we, where did we go? That, uh, where the down ledges that, like, uh, it's like, uh, you guys skated it a lot. A, lo- a lot of people skated it. Oh, the, you're talking about the, the curved, like? No, they're like, not curved. They're like flat and down, and then there's like a a triple down ledge. It's not like down ledges. They're like banks. It's in. It's in. Where Sean filmed a lot of those uh, when he did that like weird that weird uh, WRS contest. Mm-hmm. He skated the down rails there, and he did a bunch of like. 360 tricks on like these tiny square down rails oh the fucking middle school middle school thank you westport middle there we go that makes sense that's a fun spot that place is no more oh really well the ledges are still there but it's like a art studio kind of a space it's like a it's a fucking super expensive space that's just in an old school that nobody can afford I don't even know who who would even have money or like want to be in there. If you have money to be in there, you might as well be like living in downtown in like some big ass building. I don't even know what you do there. No artists have money. How is the scene in Kansas City? Like just in general, like this, like the city. Is it like slow or has it picked up at all or anything like that? Uh, It's definitely gotten more expensive. Like Mm. the housing market's gotten fucking insane. Um, like a house that would cost you 40 grand seven years ago is like $240 or $240, 240 grand now. Like, it's like kind of insane. Like, and everything is the same. It's a bunch of fixer uppers. Like you have to have a bunch of money. It's fucking nuts. And everybody's like buying here, but they're like, oh, this is, like, way more work than it's worth. So they're just, like, tearing it down or, like, reselling it. I don't know. It's weird. Mm. A bunch of fucking gentrification. Very tight. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like that's happening in, like, every small city where there's, like, yeah. an opportunity to, like, buy something at a real cost. Like Yeah. <laughs> but it's not even, like, good now. Now it's all like corporations buying everything, like buying random houses. I can I don't know what they would do with them in like some of these neighborhoods. I'm like, you don't have room to put like shit in here that's like lucrative. Like, I don't know. Like why you're destroying a neighborhood to like just own a piece of land. And they're like, think about 15 years from now. That's why they have money and I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm just like, you guys are fucking up neighborhoods. But whatever it's uh is it like uh a lot of it is the same but because i remember when we were there everything being so cheap but it was also kind of hood in some areas and i can't imagine that's like not changed as much but except the price this whole city is hood kansas city is fucking hood as shit it's a bunch of drugs and murder here it's wild but it's like 
Detroit, but more trees. Detroit Maybe. with trees. Yeah. Interesting. I've never been to Kansas City. I've like driven through, but like never really stopped or anything. So. Yeah. I think there's a bunch of good food and a bunch of good food, really. Uh, it's like it has culture for the Midwest, but I don't know. I'm in a constant battle with people from here. They're like, oh, I fucking Florida. And I'm like, oh, fucking Midwest. Like, fuck you, Missouri's insane. It's like drugs and murder <laughs> everywhere. Like, get the fuck out of here. We were, we were just naked on the interstate. You're fucking like murdering people while smoking meth. I've seen people do like gnarly shit outside of work. Like smoke crack while taking a shit. I'm like, is this fucking Los Angeles? I was going to say, it sounds like pretty much what's going on around me. Taylor's probably seen something similar. Yes. I, I just came back from visiting New York too. And I like, I was so stunned. Like I hadn't been there for like over a year. And just seeing the amount of people, I was like, I forgot that it was like this. And then I got back here and I was like, this is a, actually kind of freaky how little people there are here. Yeah. Wait, where are you at? San Francisco. And even oh, okay. there's a lot of people, but like the homeless people really stick out way more over here. Yeah. Maybe it's just my neighborhood too. Could be. I mean, here from like street to street, it could get pretty hairy. Like people are like, oh, don't go past Truce. Truce and East is where like black folks live that don't have money. So people are like, oh, don't go past Truce. I'm like, I'm not fucking with you no more. Fuck out of here. You just know what kind of person they are with the advice that they give you. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, are you scared of people that don't look like you? Fuck off. I I think that's a thing that we get from skating too, though. We just spend so much time around people like in the street, like either A, that they live there, or you just see people going through that don't belong outside. Yeah. And the thing I've always gathered from skating is that people with no money when I'm skating their neighborhood, don't give a shit. People with money when I'm skating their neighborhood are like, we got to do something about this. We and I'm gotta like, do about we've got to do something about this. We got to do they got the about this. We got to. I can't have this guy doing this. He's doing his hibbity hop. Some guy came out with a, this is like an old man came out with a pipe on my little brother and our other buddy. And he's like, you fucking skateboarders. And my brother's like, whoa, 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 man. What are you doing with that pipe? We got rollerblades. And the guy goes, you, f oh, I'm so sorry. Oh gosh. I, these skateboarders always come and they fuck up this, the paint on this, but you guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. And like, you do whatever you guys are doing. It's just the skateboarders. And we were like, oh, we're going to fuck this thing up. You just <laughs> put it together. Really? Comes out with a pipe. You skateboarders, we're rollerblading. I'm gonna go get my Twizzler. <laughs> People are strange. When you're a stranger. Are you a Twizzler or a Red Vine guy? Oh my God. Uh, neither really, but I guess if I had to choose, yeah, I'd be a Red Twizzler. Yeah. I like a Swedish fish. Ooh. Good licorice. Not bad. 38 going on 70. You have any, uh, any, any other like uh, weird things that are like on your menu? Ooh, pretty much every Asian country food, a lot of Thai food, Korean food, kimchi. That's a big one. Uh, boy, anything you can put in a wok. I never knew what kimchi was until I moved to San Francisco. Oh, it's so good. If you like fermented things that are uh, fermented, I guess. I was big on sauerkraut. I just needed the Asian version. Yeah. You ever made sauerkraut? Yes. It's very fun. Good. Dill, mustard seeds. Wait, what? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> you like rolled your eyes for God. Out. Casey's here. I see up to you. Trying to eat my food. 
I want him gone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do though. <laughs> yeah. So, what so do you do uh, for entertainment? Like, what do I do in my free time? Yeah. Uh, hang out with my girlfriend, like, watch shows and shit. No, uh, ride bicycles, build bicycles, um, I clean a lot, like a maniac, cook food a lot. Um, I don't know. Try to get into some shit because I'm normally like just with my girlfriend's name is Tara I'm with her like all the time like when I'm not at work so she's like you should hang out with your friends like all the fucking time because I'm like girlfriend guy like I'm like all right I'll see you guys in like five and a half years when we break up <laughs> like so she's like go fucking hang out with your friends dude and I'm like all right uh, otherwise I would just like lay on a couch and like watch horror movies all day long and until I felt like getting up and like prepping food but I don't know bicycles bikes are the main. what uh what kind of bikes are you riding these days fixies or you uh um kind of can I switch this thing around how do I do oh never mind POV Nice stained glass door, dude. That was really tight. You don't want to see this. Nobody wants to see this. It's Casey's bike. Come on, man. What are you doing, man? This one. It's like one of my main rigs. Uh, Sean's old bike. I'm going to take all that stuff off there because it's like way nicer than his frame. Uh, this one. It's old specialized rock hopper from the early 90s. I think it's tight. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good time. Got your plants, Casey. Hello. This thing, big scare freestyle rig. So, have you always been a, a bike guy? Yeah. Well, I mean, since yes, two thousand six. Yeah, it's fun. They're easy to work on. Fun to ride. Yeah, I got my bike behind me. My singular bike. That's all I have enough room for. I what do you got going on there? Uh, it's a Kevin Yee's old bike that he gave to, or that he sold to Danny Malm. Then I got it. So it's been, it's been through the, uh, the skate community. The single speed. Who's Kevin Yee? He, uh, I'm joking. I'm I'm joking. He's very sick. So is Danny Mellon. Danny Elcato. That's my dog. Those guys are radical. Have you ever come to San Francisco? <clears throat> uh, once for Road to Nowhere. We mm. skated the famous spot with the ledges. I did like fakey three, fakey three in the bottom part. Oh, yeah. Clipper. Yeah. Clipper, clipper ledges. I was like, I'm gonna jump these. Like, people jump that shit. Don't worry about it. Yeah, there's a lot of history when you go around the city, like what people have done. I'm glad I have locals when I go out, or otherwise I would have no idea like how many things have been done. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was like the whole time I was in California. Like Brandon was like, Don't worry about that shit. <laughs> I was like, All right, sick. Thank you for saving have- me. That's how Kansas City felt when we came. It was like, you know, Brasca lived here like for a long time. It's all over. Most so don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I have Germ. He he lets us know what's been done in LA. Yeah. Pretty much everything is yeah, it's been touched. Everything's been touched. Yeah. Seems like everything on on the west coast has been pretty much touched as you find little nuggets here and there yeah you definitely gotta get cutty so you're still it seems like you're still like paying attention to a lot of skating that's still going on are you are am i right or not really no 
Is no. there anything that's inspiring you currently that like that you're actually stoked on or uh Jeff Akers? <laughs> <laughs> um seriously though, honestly, him skin P rails. He looks sick. Um anytime Ritter does like a random thing, like on his anytime Ritter puts a thing on his Instagram. Um obviously if JJ does a thing or like his little, like the Sunday brunch things, those are cool. Cause I get to see like Alex Miranda, Alex Miranda is super sick. Randy Spicer is fucking amazing. Um, but for the most part, I don't know who to watch. Oh, what's the, uh, the Japanese kid. Uh, Jake Cabeth. Jack. Uh, yeah. June Q whatever his name is that dude's sick as fuck like i'm like he's from oh south korea. <clears throat> he's from south okay. korea yeah okay. but yeah but he's the beautiful rollerblader yeah he's amazing it's not japanese um <laughs> we uh we talked to him on our podcast we had a translator really yeah it was, yeah, pretty, it was cool. pretty gnarly yeah that dude's fucking incredible i mean like i've been watching him for like a few years now just on like instagram I'm like all right he's very sick his last thing i don't remember what he did but it was gorgeous Probably yeah he's the type of dude that can legitimately just roll around and it's beautiful yeah i know there was a backslide on like a little bar up on top of a pyramid he did some kind of a oh he did hurricane topsoil on the quarter pipe hurricane topsail thank you and it looks so fucking easy like it was so yeah. good like he, he didn't even put his head around before he hit his feet on the coping like he just like blindly like laced it and just like looked all like i'm like why don't you just kick the curb at that point motherfucker like he's so sick like it's, inc- uh, it's incredible that they can make that trick look so if people that can make that trick look easy like that i mean he's one of like three people but yeah Dude, it was like he was like flicking a booger. Like he was like, yeah, so what? I'm like, I just, just want to know what it feels like. Probably feels cool. Like, does it feel as cool as it looks? It's got it, right? Just do it. I'll do it too. Yeah. Me and you both. Yeah. I probably could, but it wouldn't look like that. It's never casual for me. <laughs> it's oh. never. <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta really be. Who do you guys look at? As far as like current skating, yeah, I guess. Um, I'm really stoked on that kid Ilya. That kid, the uh, the kid from Russia that uh does like those incredible UFO set slides. He's on Rosies. Yeah, he's, I don't know. Oh, we gotta. We'll send you him. He's very, yeah, he very should. entertaining. Yeah, just entertaining is a good word for it. Not okay. really give a fuck. In- incredible natural ability, and then he just has a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, I'd say he's up there. It's, it's there's a there's so many. I like even out here with us. Like I like watching Sean whenever Sean Keen skating, Vasugi. A lot of the guys. Sean Keen sick. Yeah, I never see Vasugi. I love that dude too. I guess I love a lot of people that skate and watching them skate, but I don't get to see them that often, yeah. which I guess if I skated and gave a shit, I'm sure it'd be that for someone, but yeah, there's like probably a lot of people that I'd like to see skate. Definitely. Dom Bainbrick. I would love to see him skate. I agree with that one wholeheartedly. Everything he does looks easy. And I'm like, dude, you haven't skated in like seven years. His older skating is just like so mind-blowing how nonchalant he works on rails. Yeah. It's, it's really incredible. He's got the good arms. Yeah, really nice No, arms. Ma- no matter what he's doing, he's, <laughs> he's showing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, just yeah. a little bit of elbow movement. The hands don't even go anywhere. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I could fucking... Hold a goddamn cocktail with this fucking hand. Yeah, my shoulders jump up. I can't. 
help myself get all intense. I'm trying so, to keep it loose. So is there anyone uh, like when you were saying before that like, like you had stole things, does any, nothing really still comes to mind? Like, was there like a person that you were like, oh, I'm going to skate like that? Uh, maybe early on, like uh, uh, Josh Petty. Uh, um, yeah, I guess like skating wise. Um, I don't know. Dom Sagono was always a person stuck out in my mind dl was somebody i tried to steal from but i just could not not really though eh, maybe no no not really i don't know it's kind I of mean, like took inspiration from people here and there but it was usually like i don't know dl and uh sagona are people i tried to be like but i just could not their body moves differently from mine. I ended up being more of like a feeling more like Shima or something like that. Like when I was like doing things, like I was like, oh, I feel like I look like this doing this kind of a thing. We usually, right. we start, we start off a lot of interviews with this, but what got you into rollerblading in general? We didn't cover that at all. Oh, um, I was a rink rat at um skate world in tampa growing up um i started going there when i was probably like i was in definitely in uh, preschool and just roller skated there went there every like friday and saturday night until it was like nine or ten and then saw this kid paul um paul i don't know where you are um doesn't matter but he had some rollerblades in like 93 and they were painted red and he was grinding the bench. All the benches were church pews. Um, and I was like, oh my God, that's incredible. It's like what I've been doing, but he's like sliding across the thing and that's fucking amazing. So I got some hockey skates after mowing two lawns from my first, or my friend at the time and just started doing the same shit on the same church pews. And then a couple of bike racks like in shopping centers and stuff. And then I saw like NIS and then I saw like ASA stuff and um, so X Games. TV. Yeah. All, okay. Yeah. It was like my grandma would be like, I taped this for you. And I'm like, tired. <laughs> so kind of kept it going. Shout out, Grandma. Yeah. Sally, I love you. I miss you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. She helped yeah. create the Mike Lily that we needed. Oh my god! Not necessarily the Mike Lily we wanted. We got Casey. I got there... you. What did he say? He said, "All right." <laughs> so, uh, was there like a point where you were you like? What's he saying over there? I don't fucking know. What? He's just <laughs> mumbling at himself. No, he's, he's saying mumbling at you. He's mumbling at me. Okay. What? what? So, can you remember like a point where you were like, "All right, I'm gonna like pursue skating as a thing." Like the second I started doing it. Okay. Yeah. And then like going to spot, uh, growing up in Tampa, going to skate park Tampa. Um, every Sunday they had a rollerblading only sash. And um, it was Kenny Wonder, Morgan Pesco, uh, Josh Petty used to live there. So he was there. Um, this guy Phil moved there. I can't remember. It's Phil Berg. And he was really good at ramps. And they all dress cool for the times. Like Morgan was like a fucking uh, vert skater. Kenny Wonder could do misty flips both ways. Uh, Josh Petty had bendy legs and could do fish brains. Um, Phil could do like Phillips 66 and 
uh, 720s both ways and shit. Like, I was just like, all right, this is kind of incredible. Are you filming me right now? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was about when. Like, I was like, oh my God. And then, of course, after like television, like videos came in. Yeah, because there, there's like, you have to see something like that, like in person, I feel like. And seeing that's probably what made it, is, at least, is that what made it seem like a thing? Like after you saw them in person, like doing yeah. another level of stuff? Yeah, definitely. And then like just being at spot and like knowing what it was like before I even like knew what skate parks were really. Um, mm -hmm. And then. Sorry to cut you off, but you are working. Tomorrow. Yeah. Time you off? Like 1.32? Like 2, 3. Eric? Yeah. All right. 35. That's love, people. Love you. Love you too. Be safe. Oh, not riding. Throw my bike, but it's way quicker. There you go. Well, yeah, you like. Send it off. <clears throat> oh, <Don't> <laughs> your go. friends, that you love them and stay safe. Those are two important things for your homie is just just real quick yeah well i thought he was riding home and it's like the paseo is a really long road and it's multiple lanes and it could be kind of tricky yeah. but yeah um skate park of tampa knowing knowing about skateboarding before that um and then seeing those dudes there it was wild like i remember like there's like a little, um, maybe like eight foot box that sat in the middle of the park and it had angle iron coping that was like rounded off, like not sharp shit. Um, and there was a concrete bench that was like super rounded off. It looked like a bunch of fucking BMXers and metal pegs just like destroyed it. But we used to set it down that grind box and every Sunday for like what I feel like was like two years, like we just used to skate like do top sides down that thing constantly like that's when top sides were like happening so i was just like top assetting this thing forever and there was a beam on the wall where there was like a six foot quarter pipe so we just like do top side stalls on that top sides were the shit like when they came out we were i was just like all right like fast plant fish brain stall 180n that was like the jam of course like jj was doing it and um, and videos like VGs and shit like uh, that time was so fun when I was a little kid like I was just like I don't know it's, there was like no other way obviously like it was the most fun thing that there could possibly be to do coming from a like a kid that roller skated to like putting on roll blades that were like equipped to do anything like it's just nothing else to do what was daily bread uh like were you ever in any of the daily breads uh oh i was in a daily bread right before uh fucking uh was that a daily bread right before road to nowhere it was like a coming up it's like my back bar in tallahassee uh so yeah but that was like right near the end I was in a box magazine when I was 14 doing a sit macchio on a rail in down in Tampa. That was your, was that your first? I'm assuming that was your first feature. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like a little like beanie with a, like a beanie with a brim on shit. Mm, like basically dressed. Beanie. Yeah. Like a white Senate shirt. It's like Kevin Gillen up in this. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you mentioned you're you were quad skater first. Yeah. Uh, do you have any feelings on the like resurgence of this like quad community? Um, I think it's sick. Like, why the fuck not? I agree. But I yeah, it's rad. It. Like, if yes, I think that it's really sick. If anybody wants to do it at all if no one's ever done anything like that like in the past and is like ready to explore what they can like put themselves through with that that's even better 
like if this is your first go of like me physically fuck it that's fucking radical um i think it's also really sick that it's like um a lot of like uh it's like women basically like it's it's a bunch of women that like are in like a fucking patriarchy forever never get any light shine on them they're just like i can go out there and like do like a a gr- i don't even know what their grinds are called 50 50s um anyways just women going out there and getting some light in the up a, a, a big way of sports that are just like have always been men like and you know anyone can do it but i think it's tight that like women can get some light shine on them and other people can take something older that we ultimately came from and make it modern and make it fun and obviously people enjoy it it's probably like bigger than we are right now oh it's way bigger they definitely so, carved out a nice part of the skate park for themselves which i think is cool to watch them just like take that back and like like you said it's just usually a bunch of guys yeah i think it's rad like why the fuck not i don't know if anybody goes to the skate park and it makes sense or goes anywhere and it makes sense and it's fun then why the fuck not well said yeah well said for sure uh have you thought about getting on a pair of quads anytime recently i always think about it i mean i have quads but they're not like those you got like a pair of peanut butters or something like like ring skates no, man, I don't skate those fucking school bus skates. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I got the I got the old laser plates. I got the Rydell boots. Like I got my old setup from when I was a kid. Oh, you like went back and got or it was I didn't same. like go fucking insane and like go get all the shit piece by piece, but like the laser plates and the Rydell boots are a part of the build that I had when I last skated when I was a little kid. And then the bearings, I, I don't fucking know what they are. The wheels are not great either. But I definitely have, like, dance plugs. They're, like, um, like jam skates. They're for, like, rolling around. I don't do the big stoppers, like, at all. Mm, no so, stoppers? No. Nah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't go backwards and stop on my toes. <laughs> I don't do that. Are you so jam? I might start. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I, I'm always amazed to see girls go down ramps at skate parks with toe stop, like a break in your front. I just, it scares the shit out of me every time I That's see it. That's what drives me nuts. And then they're like, oh yeah, you don't like that? I'm I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It just looks scary. No, I know. And then they're like, I'm going to fucking stall on this thing. And I'm like, all right, you're giving me a fucking heart attack. The last time I played with a pair of quads, I definitely had to figure out the, the toe pit. That was, uh, I got a ramp. It really scary. Really fucking scary. I don't know how. Oh, they don't have laces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You pulling them out for us? Yeah, I am. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, look wow. at those views. Oh, how about that? Nice wheels. Yeah, those are sick. Hey, thanks. It's a point of pride for me. Yeah, you seem actually more proud of those skates than the two pairs of rollerblades you got is, is that a fair fair assumption no 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 come on man have you ever tried the skate park with those no i don't think i would probably just go to the go to the rink check that out carving and quad <laughs> 
like bowls. How often do you go to a rink? Never. You just, you just have them. skates. Okay. You just have them. I mean, yeah. Do you? Do you not, okay. What? That's just. My, it's a funny thing to just like. All right, I'm gonna get this item. I've had like, them for like three years. How how many times have you used them since you got them? Maybe like three times. That's, yeah, I don't know how many times I'd use them if I had them. I know. Is there like a, a weekly skate in Kansas City? Uh, you guys really want to talk about this? I don't know. Every Sunday there's an adult skate, but I don't really make it out of the skating rink. I don't make it to the skate park. It's like 30 seconds away from work, but it's like full of people. It's a thousand degrees and skating hurts. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I wasn't, sh- I just generally like don't know how many different cities still have, or like have weekly skates. It's a, Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, we're, I'm still finding out everywhere seems every major city seems to have one. Like a Tuesday night skate or some shit like that. Whether it's Tuesday here, it's a Friday night skate. And there's like a bunch of people that like they push around a boom box and you go through the city and it's like a, it's like a party type of thing. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever I see something like that, I'm just, I don't know. When do you go to work? Where do you work? That's what you think about when you see a, a weekly skate group? Yeah. Do you have any assumptions on where they work? No. They work online. Possibly. Probably. Post-pandemic. Well, Mike, we've been at this for uh, almost two hours. Yeah. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, taking, yeah, of course. Taking time. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, it's cool to talk to you, man. Yeah. yeah. I watched your videos a lot. Thank you. Oh, I uh, I was showing my girlfriend. I'm like, we're talking to this guy tomorrow. And then I put on Road to Nowhere because it has the, possibly the best intro of any skate video. Yeah. And, and then she's like, this is really good. I really like this one. And then the, I think the first clip is, or it's in there where you're jumping off the roof of that, whatever that place was with the. Yeah. Can you, can you just talk to us about that a little bit? Cause that trick is fucking nuts. Uh, there was a thrift store there and Brandon wanted to go. And uh, I saw the roof. So I got up. A- got a post up got up there and then he filmed it i was like oh filmed what 76 in the background um just look cool brandon was stoked about it i don't know we we're all sitting around ollie short was, was with us yeah chase was too Shout yeah yeah was we just went to a thrift store and I was like, all right, I'm getting on that thing. I think it was on purpose. I think Brandon knew what he was doing. I think he's okay. like, you, you want to go to a thrift store and not skate? You know? <laughs> we were all like, yeah. You pulled the wool over your eyes real quick. Yeah. And then it was like, check out this fucking skate ramp. I, don't know. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, I could have, would have thought like, maybe you thought about it for a little bit before you went and tried to do that. But it. It's, it's way sicker that it was in the moment. No, it was a get off the fucking interstate and go to a thing. He's like, I know of a thrift. But he was pretty good like that. Like he would, I don't know. He would take us to places be like, no pressure. Here's this fucking impossible thing to avoid. He was really sick like that. Like, And if you said you didn't want to do anything, like, I don't feel comfortable doing this. He'd be like, no worries, no worries. But you have this underlying feeling of like, oh, he could fucking get it. And like, I just, I cannot not get it. Like, he was, he was good like that. He had a way. Fucking fool you into 
doing some shit. It's a cool thing to have as a filmer. Yeah. To be your friend. Yeah. He was incredible. Very funny. Yeah, it's it's cool how we meet a bunch of amazing people through this. I think that's the best part. Even if everything yeah. else is like pretty frustrating at times, the people that you want to be friends with is like the sickest part. Such as life, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean life's I, frustrating and imperfect, but get to have a bunch of, I don't know, pretty amazing interactions that change your way of thinking occasionally and kind of help you evolve as a human being it's worth being alive just like skating this that art food no you always meet somebody that changes your mind occasionally that's something to hold on to well i think that's a beautiful yeah that was a good this is a good place to end it yeah that was fucking beautiful man thanks again thank you yeah. Of course. Have a great oh. rest of your day, Mike. Thanks again. You too. Bye, Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.